All right, here we go. So we're solving radical equations. I kind of see why they put this in unit three, but I think they just want to get you ready for our next, uh, our next unit. That's why they put this in here. Okay, don't worry about this one, guys. So it's really the same as just solving equations. We just have to remember the opposite of squaring a value is taking the square root, right? So think about it. X squared is equal to 64. X squared. So I look at that. If I want to isolate X, I just need to do the opposite of squaring something. And the opposite of squaring is square rooting. So you see here that it's a square root of X squared. And what that does is on the left side, it's going to cancel out the square. The square root cancels out the squared value. Okay. Essentially what this is saying right here, this square root of X squared, it's saying the square root of X squared. What times what gives you X squared? What times what gives you X times X? X. Okay. So that might've been more confusing actually. The main thing here is to remember that X squared square rooted cancels out the squared. It's, ask, it's asking what times what gives you x squared? x, x times x does. Okay, so look, if it was x squared is equal to 64, we would square root both sides, just like if we were doing solving an equation, it's always to both sides, canceling out the squared value, getting x by itself equal to the square root of 64 is eight. Yeah, all right. Over here, if I instead started with x squared is equal to 9, and this is more what today's lesson is about, square root of x is equal to 9, I would square both sides. Again, the square root is the opposite of squaring something. The opposite. And we always do the opposite operation in order to, the ops operation in order to, um, to get rid of that operation, to get rid of that uh, component here. So look, Square root of x squared cancels those out. So we end up with x left over. 9 squared is 81. And now let's look and see if this works. 81, if we put 81 in here, what is the square root of 81? 9. Okay. If your, if your square and square roots aren't like solid and fast, no worries. Get out your calculator. Um, this, this whole year, calculator is just fine. Okay. All right, the other last thing we have to do once we find our, whoops, once we find our solution, we just have to plug in to uh, plug into our original equation to see if it works. Just like when we had fractions in our last lesson, we plug in our, our solution to see if it made the fraction zero, right? What numbers are not allowed under the square root? What numbers are not allowed under the square root? We've talked about this this year when we had complex numbers. Remember imaginary numbers? So what value is not allowed under a square root symbol? Not a number, a type of number. The opposite of positive. <laughs> negative numbers can't have under the root. So if we end up with an answer that is negative, and we plug it back in or any expression we work out under the root and we have a negative, then we'd have to say that it's an extraneous solution. Extraneous solutions, yeah, zero can be under the root because the square root of zero is zero. We're only worried about negatives, okay? So extraneous solutions we're starting to see is more the definition of solutions that make, make our original function um, incorrect in some way, either zero under the root or a negative under, excuse me, either a negative under the root or zero as our denominator, not allowed. Okay. So that's what extraneous is more or less here. All right. Let's look at solving number one, because look, this is the square root of X minus five. If I want to solve for X, first off, I have to get this X minus five, this expression, out from under the root. So it is that easy, guys. Look, I'm going to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. What am I going to do? I'm going to square both sides. You see? That is always going to get rid of the root. I think that this isn't, for a lot of folks, um, a bit of review. The main thing is that the opposite operation will get rid of 
the parts we don't want. We're isolating x. We don't want to know x squared. We don't want to know the square root of x minus 5. We want to know x is equal to. So this is the same as like cutting away the parts we don't need. Look, if it's square rooted, we're going to square it, and that's going to get rid of the root. Left over, x minus 5. What is 2 squared? 4. And from there, it's easy coasting. It's like downhill on your bike. You just don't even have to hold on to the handlebars. It's coast. 9. Done. And then I'm not done. I have to see if it's an extraneous solution, actually. I take my 9. I put it back in for my x. 9 minus 5 is 4. That works. So check mark. We're done. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Thumbs up, sideways down. I feel like we've seen it. I love that this lesson is what we're kind of capping this, uh, this unit with here. So we'll spend more time on the next. The next unit has more to it. We're going to spend plenty of time on that. Okay. Now let's move on down then. Okay. This one's slightly different because look, this one, instead of it being the square root of X minus five, now it is just the square root of X minus five. You see how it's different? You would like say it the same way, but it's different because the root here covered X minus five here, the root just covers X. Now, at this point, if you squared both sides, you would end up with a FOIL situation over here because we have two different terms. We wouldn't be able to just cancel out the, the root here. So the hint is to isolate the radical first. If you isolate the radical first, then squaring both sides gets rid of the root. And you don't have to worry about anything else. So look, we're going to go with adding 5 first. Negation. Negation means we cancel out by the opposite value. Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. So we have square root of x is equal to 7. Now we have the situation where we can square both sides. Square, square. Square root of x squared is x. So you want to make it as simple as possible. You basically want the radical expression by itself so that when you square both sides, you don't, you don't, you don't end up with like a mess. Keep it nice and neat here. We get x is 49. And we'll box it and then double check. Does this work? 49, if I put in here for x, looking for an extraneous situation, it's just the square root of 49. That's fine. And uh, we can even put in there and see that the square root of 49 is 7 minus 5 is 2. So we're double. We're double sure with that. We're double sure. There's really only one other step, one other depth. I'm only at 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Is this the shortest lesson in the history <laughs> of my classes? Eh, it might be. I don't mind. You guys are under stress. I want to give you time to study for the other classes because next unit is where we get into some trickier stuff. This unit, that's fine. I like, I like underhand pitch lessons here and there. Okay. Now look at this. We have slightly more complicated, but not really. What should we do? Who has an idea what should we do? Tell me in the chat. Or unmute even. Ooh. What should we do? Because remember, the goal was, like over here, to get the square root by itself. Nice, Alicia. Anyone else? Hmm. Yes, isolate the radical by doing what? I'm going to give you a hint. It's nine times the square root of four times x. Yeah, Dave. Good, Hunter. All right, that's that's pretty good. All right, look, we want to get to the square root. We want to isolate this radical by itself so that we can square both sides. Right now, if I square both sides, I'm dealing with this nine. 
out here and that gets trickier there's more rules to remember with that so instead we're going to just divide by nine and this is free to do you know you don't have to go the hard route you can you can whittle away first and then square it okay that will always work now we have the square root of 4x is equal to 8 okay so this is now just like the first problem we are going to go in and square both sides. And we'll have one more step after this because we're going to get rid of the radical symbol here. And then look what's left, though. 4x is equal to 8 squared is 64. Mm -hmm. 4 times x. Go ahead and finish it up. Yeah, finish it up and throw your answer into the uh, in the chat. There it is. Nice, Lisa. Anyone else? Yeah, Joshua uh, Santana. Good. It's like too easy of a question. You're like. Look, you just divide. <laughs> Four times x, so we do the opposite. Nice, Sarah. Sorry. Sorry. Ugh. X divided, 4 divided by 4 is 1x. 64 divided by 4 is 16. Let's double check ourselves. Is this extraneous? Look, take that 16, put it in the original. Square root of 16, is that permitted? Yeah, it's positive. The only thing we're checking at the end is to see if it makes something under the root, if it makes it into a negative number. Then we would write extraneous situ uh, solution. Here we didn't have that situation, so we're going to say it's done. Ah. Mm. It's as hard as it gets. It's like a review lesson. All right. So finish up your work there, and then let's have a really good vote. Really good vote to see if uh, this is going good. Thumbs up, sideways, down. Show it in the chat. Show it in the participant link. Show it in the screen. Turning on real quick. Whatever you want to do. Okay, I see four thumbs. All right. Oh, we got five thumbs. Thanks. Taria, perfect. We needed that. Samuel, good. <laughs> we need your thumbs, kid. <laughs> the world the world is going to end if we don't hit your thumbs. Oh, there it is. See, he's ready. He's ready. <laughs> That's funny. All right, guys. Hey, let me go ahead and stop the video. 13 minutes. It's nice.